Hey guys, Trevor and John coming to another Watch Your Realms video. So if you guys did not see my summoning video, um, I did have some very, very good luck on it. Um, and actually also with that, we got a new champion. <clears throat> now that new champion was one that I was super hyped for. So we got two of them, right? We got Alara. There will be a video on her. Um, but Constance is the one we're going to talk about right now. So first, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna grade her on, uh, in this video. We're going to review her kit together. I'm gonna show you where I've been using it, her. Uh, we may tweak her gear just slightly. And then I will, with you guys, the viewers watching this video, go through and kind of test her in some other areas to see how I feel about her, to see if she makes more sense than what I'm currently seeing her role. But I was very excited for her and she already has made a difference in Tide. Like I just slot her in a Tide uh, not with very good gear, to be honest, right now. And she made me, like, easily, I, I went up another five levels. Just just from adding her into the, the, the group. So she is going to make a big difference in my account, I feel like. I just gotta leverage her properly. So this video, we are going to test her out, see what we can do, see what happens, see if the way I build her is work, working. Uh, because the real question is, is, is she the champion that's great for, like, early game, mid game, late game? Um, or, you know, depending on where, where should she be utilized? So that's gonna do it do it in this video so stay tuned and hopefully you guys like it also if you have your own comments and on constants leave them right now and then at the end of the video let me know if uh, if those changed at all all right so let's just dive right into it so i i played hell to get me a constants okay I summoned a lot of divine shards to uh, hopefully get lucky. Um, I did get lucky and I did get Constance. I was super excited. Um, it was kind of funny. I enjoyed it. Now, this happened Friday. Since Friday, I have went ahead and I've got all of her promotions done. She's level 60. Um, artifact, I farmed and got uh, lucky and got Ulog's wall. And uh, so I made another one of those, put it on her. Gear-wise, I do have her built in attack-based sets um, with some HP here because it's going to help over here, and I didn't have any attack-based over here. Now, the reason being is because of her kit, so let's go ahead and dive right into her kit. And um, first thing to notice is the talent. When being healed, the hero restores 3% rage. This effect can be triggered one time every two seconds, so note the talent, okay? So when she's healing, she's also rage boosting. All right, so her first ability grants attack based healing to one ally in range, extorting HP equal to 65% of the hero's he healing multiplier for the ally. When the hero blocks enemies, she stops healing and strikes one blocked enemy, dealing 105 damage. The 105 damage is pretty part of the course. It's actually maybe on the lower end for a normal tank. However, if she's not blocking, she's healing, right? And she's got a pretty wide range, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, so there you go. She's two in front, like she's she's two, 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 two by two range. So she is pretty good uh, range wise. So now let's go into the, her other skill. Passive, rejuvenating chant. Increases healing on other ground units by 23%. Additionally, her basic attack that heals allies will also apply self-healing at a rate of 50% of the healing multiplier. So let's read that, so let's break that down further. So one, increases healing on other ground units by 23%. So she is going to make any other fighters or ground units or defenders in around in her two by two square heal by 23%. So this means if you stack uh, like arrogance or um, Zillatu or some or Valkyrie behind her in range, they will get additional healing on them in case they're taking any damage. So that's definitely notable to take in, in mind. And also notice that it is a passive, okay? So it's not conditional where like the healing is here. This is a passive ability. Okay, now let's go to the next portion of it. Additionally, her basic attack that heals allies will also apply self-healing at a rate of 50% of the healing multiplier. So what this means, is when she is not blocking she's doing healing when she's doing the healing portion she will additionally heal herself with like a self-heal at 50 percent of the healing multiplier 
So her overall heal is 65% for everyone else. So that's while not blocking. Let's say she blocks, she defends, and then she needs to be healed back up. Well, what does she do? Does she become the target or does she heal everyone else up first? She's going to get a 50% boost each time. So this is going to be very, very helpful, right? As far as... Um, like self rejuvenation like if you can dps burst right and then block dps burst to block she's going to be very very uh self-sufficient so to speak um all right faithful renewal so another passive so she's got two passives and a talent which i love to see uh that's always good in champions that you really want to utilize when receiving damage restores hp equal to 120 percent of healing multiplier when receiving aoe damage additionally heals all allies and basic attack range equal to 40 percent of the healing multiplier this can this effect can be triggered only one time every 30 seconds what does this mean so when receiving damage restore hp equal to 120 percent so um if i'm reading this 100 percent of, of the healing multiplier if i'm reading this correctly whatever the he healing multiplier she has multiplied by 120 percent she's going to get that back every time she hit, gets damaged. So this means that her healing multiplier, if you can stack it super high, is going to be very, very beneficial. So I think if I go here, I can see what is her uh, healing multiplier. So we have healing effect is at 40 plus 44 here. Uh, I believe if that was a little bit higher, um, that would actually help her do a lot more self-sustain, so to speak. Uh, but it also tells me that you do want to make sure that you get some healing effect uh, on her. So that way you can actually take very good advantage of this. On top of this, like um, if it's AOE damage, right now, not only is it AOE damage, but she's also going to, uh, to improve the HP of everyone around her for taking an AOE bomb. And if she's the blocker, and against an AOE champion, chances are she's going to do that, right? It's going to happen. Um, this also means that, uh, say, for example, the uh, the dragon for a guild boss, right? What's his attack? AOE. So right here, one, she's going to get a massive heal for herself, and she's going to heal everyone else around her every time, every 30 seconds. So this itself, to me, is just god tier for the guild boss. So this is setting her up pretty good to be a lot of ground heavy uh guild boss champion next we have the ultimate all right so the criminal crim applies 40 percent inspiration to other allies in range for 20 seconds what is inspiration increases attack proportionally to the caster's attack while this effect is active other buffs affecting the inspiration will not take effect initially the caster is immune to such buffs so, increase attack proportionally to this caster's attack while this effect is active. Other buffs affecting... The, so, she's kind of very, very similar to, like, uh, to what... Um, uh, da, 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 yeah. What, uh, what skill this is here? Graceful Dancing? Yep. Exactly. So, same deal. Same exact deal here. Um, so, this is awesome. So, you have a Dolores that can do this, and now you have a ground fighter who can also do this, right? Only it's with her, with her ulti. Um, also, it is kind of a bummer. Ulti does take a little bit, but if I can get this maxed out here, that brings that down to 900, um, which that makes me feel a little bit better, right? Um, but yeah, it's awesome. 40% of the inspiration, so 40% of the attack on an attack-based healing champion. So she's got such a good synergy here with her kit alone that it makes me very excited. Uh, that's why, gear-wise, we went all attack. Now, I do wish... Um, I did have some better attack gear, to be honest with you guys. Um, I am trying to keep this Glacier set because it turns my HP into attack as well, uh, which is very, very helpful in this case. Uh, but yeah, so I'm also looking because I really want to get the Rage Regen on, going on her. And I would really, really like to get um, the attack speed as well. So I wish I had an attack speed one here, and I don't think I do. I think I'm pretty much, yeah, up, 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 the, up the creek with this one, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, so right now we have her with this one. I was going to roll it all the way up, but it's not really all that great. I mean, I guess HP bonus is helpful. It turns into attack. Rage, in, rage regen is good, but I really want attack speed on this piece as well. Uh, but yeah, so we want to all attack here, right? All attack. Uh, we did give her some crit rate, crit damage. Uh, it's not really necessary. It's not something that I was really looking for. I'm thinking her, mostly what you want for her is attack speed, uh, rage regen, attack bonus, uh, maybe some healing effect for the multiplier boost. Uh, I think those are going to be the stats you're going to be looking for most on Constance overall. 
Um, and HP in general is gonna be hopefully very, very good. Now her HP is only at 58 here, but once again, keep in mind her passive ability when she takes damage, she's gonna be healing by that multiplier every 30 seconds. On top of that, every 30 seconds, she's going to be getting also, um, yeah, um, also getting self heal over here if she's not blocking constantly, which is gonna be something that's of importance, right? Importance to note. All right, so let's first go take her into uh, Guild Boss. Let's go try and Guild Boss, see how this goes. Um, we'll do it on Guild Nightmare 3. Now, this is probably going to end horrifically. Let's just be honest because she's not optimized for it. But let's just try her and see what happens. Uh, in this case, I will take out... Um, let's see. This is unfortunate because I don't really want to take... I'm automatically going to lose attack if I do this. Um, but I guess we'll take her out because the thought is if I bring her in, she kind of replaces Dvoris here. And then I got Vortex, unless I don't really need Vortex. But let's go, let's just test her as she is here. Uh, and let's look at first damage wise and sustain what that kind of looks like, how, how often it kind of plays out. See uh, how much healing she actually gets to do in the guild boss realm. Because I feel like she's going to be massive here, right? I feel like she's a very, very good one to have here. And if our attack speed was up even higher, I think it would be even better. So yeah, notice that her range there is really, really good. So if I actually put her right here, this would give me three tiles up top for having all in the realm. So this could work here if I do something like that and then i wonder if i put a, ooh, i could do the healer here and that'll cover everything area wise um let's not do that though let's see if maybe if i go ahead and i put in um yeah let's put in dolores let's do there's two of them right we'll do double uh we'll throw him in there i need to put him down and then recall him um, sorry, I should really be doing this a lot faster. I should, probably should have planned it out a little better as well, but that's okay. Uh, Wrath, unfortunately, buddy, you're going to miss out on Dolores' ability, but uh, it's kind of by, uh, by design here a little bit. Yeah, it's going to go there. And then last but not least, um, oh man, that because I got her down. I can't put set run down. So really, I should have given up one of them. Um, that's kind of a bummer. But I was trying to see, okay, so we got our, she's ready, her ultimate's ready here. Um, that's unfortunate because set room does so much damage in my composition. So she may not be as useful as I really think she is. And also we just stacked both those abilities, see what that does. Yeah, damage wise, that definitely was not nearly as much damage as I normally would do. Um, that's unfortunate. Yeah, because we're only at 16. Uh, we should be a lot higher than that. If I wouldn't, if she wouldn't played, it would definitely be a lot higher than that. But I can't tell if that's from set room is the problem or not. We'll have to uh, look at the stats after this. Um, battles, battles, basically, they're almost ready here. Ultis, we'll grab Dolores. Boom, go ahead and proc him. I'm just curious. I just want to see, I really want the stats. I want the, the breakdown here. This would be the second shield. So she's, she's back up now, um, which is good. But at the same time, like we kind of want Dolores. Maybe this will work out though, because we'll be able to do boom, 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 boom. That did not work out well at all because we lost him because we just didn't have, yeah. Just doesn't work very well with this composition. I don't feel like this is just not ideal. I'm not even on par to do 10K. That's basically my minimum at this point. Stats wise, healing, she did 425K heal. So her heals were on a par with Vortex. Um, now, because her heals were on par with Vortex, does this mean that if I challenge again, if I take Vortex out, that she can keep up? That will be the real question. Let's try it one more time and let's just take Vortex out, right? So we did that. Let's throw her back in. That's way I don't lose any attack like I normally would. Um, that way, these two will go get played first, and then these two will get pulled in here. We'll get the fire, the other fighter down. Let's just see what this does for me, because really, I'm looking more for Zilla 2 to be the, um, the this corner unit right here, right? To be this guy, and then we want this guy, and we want that, at least. Really, we want this as well, and then if I put her... 
See, if I do that, that just doesn't, doesn't work well lineup wise. I would really need to put her right here with Wrath on the other side um, to really make this more cohesive, unfortunately. So really, let's go ahead and let's restart that. It's kind of a bummer, though, because I don't like that lineup. So this is where that whole messes up your 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 logic on your on your lineup, right? So basically, she's got to go here, okay? Got to put her here. All right, then I got to do Wrath, probably. We'll put Wrath on the outside because we really want to make sure Zilto and Arrogance get as much damage as possible. Right, we really want to do that number there. And Wrath can kind of heal himself. He does a very, very good job of it. Um, let's throw this down, throw this one down because we want to just start getting everyone their stuff. Boom, removed. Tordor, removed. Hex, go back in there. Thank you. Boom, and then we're going to put, yep, set room right here. Now, this is going to be the real question because we don't have a technical healer. But yeah, she's going to be doing heals in, in between, right? So, and her heal, ooh, it's not going to get these two guys over here. So that could be potentially a problem. So this this could be a limitation of this type of a setup where let's do that, 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 that. And that, we don't care about getting set rooms in there as much as normal. Um, everyone else should still get a good, good boost. The set room get procced at the end and he'll just get an attack boost. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. I've done this numerous times. It, it, it is a little better if set runs in there, but it, it's not the end of the world. Okay, let's go ahead and pop it again. Uh huh. Might as well say so, so. Already, we're doing a lot better damage so far. Uh, not the best of damage compared to other times, though. We can go ahead and pop that one because we do have hers ready essentially in just a second. Uh, let's try to wait for these guys here, and then that way we can pop it again. Okay, and we'll let set room get up to about 90. Ooh, actually set room died. Okay, so that's definitely gonna be a problem because those outside ones couldn't get their HP, right? So let's go ahead and end quit battle here. So what I should see is I should see um, her HP healing or her healing be up. And it was, it was went up to 490. Uh, so she got a little bit more. So it's actually not bad. She's actually doing pretty okay as far as healing goes. So really, um, I just got to kind of, we got to figure out a better way to utilize her. But I do feel like with that healing that she was putting up and watching her, right? Because if you guys were watching her, you saw that she would attack um, when she got attacked, right? When the AOE happened, but she would just do a lot of healing as well. So she could definitely be a very viable healer and booster in this case, um, and hopefully it's better sustained where I wouldn't need that healer, which then that can make it to where like I could focus more on ground units uh, and sit that synergy instead, right? Which means that I could try to see about wiggling in like Valerie or Falcia, um, which Valerie, you know, she's a nightmare one already, right? So that would be awesome to get her in the mix because she would be doing more damage. Uh, it, it lends itself to those types of compensations. So that could be good and still have Dolores on the side or even take out Dolores, use, um, you know, use, use Constance instead. So maybe we're gonna keep playing with this. We're gonna keep trying it. Uh, it'll be a video later on who does a better Constance or Dolores. I'm sure I will do that video later. But yeah, so that was pretty good. Um, a good, good idea indicator on Guild Boss, what she could do uh, potentially, the potential's there. Let's try Material Raid. Uh, let's go ahead and do this uh, without my power of dominance. Um, yeah, it's disabled. So fight. Let's do this here. So I'm going to take out my my broke here. And I'm going to put in my Constance. We're going to see what she can do. Uh, I'm not really entirely sure how this is going to go, to be fully honest with you guys, because it's going to be basic. Very, very basic here. So let's go ahead and put her there or actually no i want falcia there i want Fal dang it i wanted falcia there not her all right well we'll do that um because i can't place her yet until we get uh get that unit closer by um oh i could play him dang it i already messed this up okay restart messing this all up that's what i want i want that here Jeez, it's like it's been a minute or something um and then we can deploy her when he gets within range which will be now okay 
So that's going to heal everyone surrounding. So that's good. So really, that means I wouldn't, I could potentially not have to have a healer on the left. We'll see how this goes. So we'll do this. Okay. Um, two times speed, pull it up. Uh, we're going to take Wrath here. So she couldn't block. So she couldn't actually hold the block there. Uh, the sustain just wasn't there. Now let's try this again. What if she has a hue? I don't need it. I don't need her to have another healer. If she can't sustain, then it's no good to me. Um, if I put a healer in because I'm thinking I'm wanting to use her with the passive healing. Now, her ultimate could be good though. Her ultimate could be good. So let's try it again. See what we can get if we do the healer. Because now I'm thinking, okay, that didn't work out well. I wanted to replace her for healing and not have to worry about it. And then I could leave a ranged unit right here, right? Um, but that didn't work out so well for me. Now this could also be because she needs to be better gear. Um, I could have her geared actually in like the damage taken stuff, which is pretty common on a lot of them, right? So let's go ahead and pop that. Uh, we'll let him attack one, one good time here. Yep, boom, there it is. Okay, so go ahead and remove him and then put in Vortex, let him start doing some healing. Yeah, so he should be able to keep her alive, hopefully. He could not. Okay, so that didn't quite work out, but that could just be a, a lineup uh, oopsie for me, so to speak. Okay, um, so so far as a blocker with her current gear, she's not cutting it uh, that well. So we may need to swap her out. So let's see. Try stage 18. Try stage 18. Uh, let's go turn off my power, right? Um, see what this will do. Uh, broke here again, left side for me. Try putting her in because she's going to be doing a lot of heals, right? So maybe she'll be able to sustain this over here. I'm not entirely sure if she will be able to or not, to be quite honest, because I normally would play broke here, here, healer, healer, and then that would be the sustain. So let's just see what this gets me here. Let's just see how long she can last if she does last. Um, so boom, there we would put Vortex in here. And then normally I would grab yep, Hollow, slap her over here. And this is how I would rock this entire thing right, right there. Now, um, also I would do, no, let's not do that. Let's not do that. Okay, let's go ahead and sustain. Um, we can get a damage unit out. Yep. Okay. So she survives the, the bash, which is good. So now you could see the healing there, did all the healings together, uh, which is good, right? Like that's something you want to see. Uh, let's throw in our damage there. And let's throw in a uh, headset. Go ahead and do your thing because you're going to need to do a lot of damage for me. Throw him in there. Boom, boom. She, oh, see, she died there. Once again, though, this, this could be one of those just limitations of the lineups that I have currently. Yeah, so that's not going to work either. Okay, well, maybe she's not as impactful in some of the areas as I thought she really was. Um, Guild Boss, I do think she's going to be great. Uh, that's kind of a bummer. I thought maybe I could throw her in there, but once again, I do have her build as attack, guys. So she is all attack percentage, trying to focus more on that. Um, and maybe that's the downfall of trying to use her for the boost and the healing at the same time. Uh, maybe that just doesn't work well, or maybe it's just this gear set, right? I think maybe there may be a better gear set out that would help her. But yeah, I guess overall in general, not quite as good as I thought she was in some aspects, but she definitely begs some testing to be done here in the guild boss. I think maybe that's where she'll shine. She will definitely shine in the faction trials for sure. That, that's a no brainer. So, um, and Tide, she was amazing in. She absolutely helped me kill it there because all I did is I stuck her, um, I stuck her right here, right? And really, um, if I was smart, I should have just swapped her and uh, and arrogance a little bit, um, or throw or throw Tordor in front of her, so that way she's not uh, getting engaged with enemies, so to speak, and she could just be healing, right? Because that would be awesome as well. But uh, but yeah, so overall in general, she's definitely helped the squad, uh, for sure helped the squad, uh, definitely not harmful. So we'll see. We'll keep playing with her. Keep keep testing her. See what we get. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, like and subscribe down below and uh, catch you guys in the next one. Peace.